Hey guys, today we're going to be configuring this PFSense router to act like a five port switch. Now by default, PFSense only configures the first and second port on the router to act as a WAN and LAN ports. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to factory default this uh, router. We're going to go here and yeah, factory reset. Yes. I'm going to quickly go over the setup portion, setting up the uh, DNS and the time zone information. We are going to change the default network configuration here from 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.5.1. Now this will make a little bit more sense afterwards uh, when we're done configuring the entire switch, but for now just, you know, do this. At this point you may manually need to unplug the LAN cable temporarily and plug it back in. And also change the IP address in the address bar to 192.168.5.1. And finally click finish. From the uh, dashboard, click on interfaces, assignments. Click add. This will add a new interface called Opti1. Click on Opti1 to configure it. Enable the interface and change the description to LAN2. Click save and apply changes. Now go back to interface assignments and repeat the exact same process for LAN 3. From the interface assignments uh, page click bridges, click add, select LAN 2 and LAN 3 by holding the control key down and clicking on it and change the description to my switch and click save. If we go back to the interface assignments uh, tab and click on the available ports, we will see that there's a new one called uh, bridge zero and in brackets, my switch. That's what we just created. Click add and then click on Opti3 to configure it. Change the description to my switch, enable the interface and change the IP4 configuration to static. Scroll down to the IP4 configuration and change the IP address there to 192.168.1.1 and change the uh, subnet to slash 24. Click save and apply changes. Click firewall rules, my switch tab and click add. Change the protocol to any, click save, and apply changes. Our next step is to configure the uh, DHCP server for our switch. Go to services, DHCP server, click on my switch tab, enable DHCP server, scroll down to range field, from field should be 192.168.1.10. Two fields should be 192.168.1.200. Scroll down and change the DNS servers to whatever you like. I change them to the Google servers. And select save. Our next step is to test what we've already configured to make sure it's working. I'm going to open up a command prompt window and do an IP config. And we can see that our IP address is 192.168.5.10. I'm going to move the uh, LAN cable over to the next port, which is part of our switch, and do the same thing. And we can see now that we're getting a, a new IP address, 192.168.1.10. Because I have moved over the LAN cable into port 2, which is our switch, we need to access PFSense from 192.168.1.1 now. Now that we know that our switch is working, I'm going to go back and add the additional interfaces we didn't include the first time around. So I'm going to speed this up. We're going to add LAN 4 and LAN 5. Next, we need to go into Interfaces, Assignments, Bridges tab. Click on the Edit icon and re-highlight all the available interfaces from LAN to LAN 5. And click Save.
now we need to clean up a few things that were set up initially by the default configuration. We need to delete the DHCP server for LAN and the DHCP6 server for LAN. And in the LAN interface section, we need to modify the IP4 and IP6 configuration type, which should be to none. Next thing on our list is to move the LAN cable back to port 2 and also plug in uh, Cisco access point so we can do a little testing by pinging across the switch. I've been refreshing the uh, DHCP status screen and our Cisco access point has finally received an IP address so it's 192.168.1.11. If I did everything correctly and I open up a command prompt and do a ping on 192.168.1.11, I should be able to get a response back from the access point. So it's failing, which means I missed a step somewhere. So what looks to be the problem is that we're missing a firewall rule in each of the LAN ports. Please add this rule to each port. After figuring out that the issue was a firewall rule, I've been constantly pinging the access point and moving the cables around. It appears to be working as expected now. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.